Hey guys, Alex Man here, back again. Got a new video for you. I know it's been a while. What's that shiny truck behind me? Oh, that's another video. I'm sorry. It's not this one. It is shiny, huh? Today we're talking about this thing. You can tell what it is. That's a uh, lawnmower, riding lawnmower chassis. Um, with the transaxle in it and the rear wheels and the bench that I built. Uh, this is. Just over six years I've had this. I bought this thing, like I said, back in 2010, just so I could take it to Hyperfest when I was in West Virginia and uh, use it as basically like a little pit mobile to carry me and my buddies around on. And it's kind of grew since then, turned into an off road thing, and I think it's pretty freaking sweet. So uh, let's talk about what we're doing today. So this lawnmower is pretty freaking beat up. I basically just rode this thing all the time, beat it up. Kind of kept it running and going enough to, to ride, but you know, things broke and I kind of just left them. And, and then the other things broke, and I said, ah, friggin' screw it, it still works, kind of. I'll just keep riding it and beating it up. But it got to the point where it could pretty much only run and drive, and that's about it. It really, I mean, had hole in the gas tank, so you could only put in like enough gas to run 20 minutes. The uh, brakes don't work. It couldn't even start. The battery didn't hold a charge, and the pull starter cord ripped. Uh, the winch didn't work. The lights don't work. The hood was all bent. You couldn't even open the hood. Uh, so I mean, oh, and the steering was all totally screwed up. I mean, bent to hell. So it really, really needed some some work, and that's uh, that's what we're here to do today. Is um, kind of well, in the process over the course of the next few weeks, I'm going to be kind of going through this thing and getting it back to nice reliable work in shape back to what it used to be but uh... you can see there it's pretty much stripped down uh... got a badass i mean a badlands winch from harbor freight there three thousand pound version um, the two thousand pound ones i went through like two or three of those so i figured they're probably not worth buying anymore i'm in the process of rebuilding this thing if anything interesting comes up i'll be making a video uh... and that's what this is um, i'm actually in the process of making some bigger front tires fit on here. Here's the stock ones, 15 inch tall. We're going up to 21, so that's going to be pretty crazy. So here's the wheels and tires I'm going to be adapting to fit onto the front of this mower. They're uh, Maxxis Razor 2s. So these are TRX 450 bolt pattern. That's an actual TRX 450 hub there. I thought about trying to adapt the spindles to make those hubs work on there, but it's a real pain in the butt. So I got a better idea. You guys recognize this? That it has a stock front rim with the uh, center part cut out. So here's the center part. I uh, basically just cut the center out, ground the outside flat, so I got a nice surface there. And as you can see, it's not quite big enough to um, hold um, some studs, but if I had um, maybe some little ears sticking out from here, drill a hole in the ears, stick some uh, studs through them, have myself a nice hub that'll fit those wheels and fit my spindle. Let's see what we can do. This is actually exactly what I did to my back wheels. Um, I took the uh, factory rear wheels off of this thing, uh, I cut the actual rims off, and then uh, because the bolt pattern is smaller on these wheels, I was able to just drill the uh, rear wheel and uh, put some studs in there and use that as a hub to hold my uh, 23s in the back. So you can see that uh, it all goes on there real nice. Now these are a pretty tall tire for this transmission. It's actually got a solid axle all the way through. Instead of just welding the diff, it's got a new uh, one-piece axle going all the way through. So, so it's a good bit stronger. Alright, so what we got to do is cut some ears out that we can uh, weld onto here. I'm thinking something sort of like this. That can uh, imagine that hole wasn't there and it was just square cut. But we could weld onto there and then we could drill a new hole in the proper location to put a stud through. So uh, just need to measure out some pieces and drill a hole in the appropriate area and then just weld them right onto there and we'll have I'll make four of them going around and then we should be able to bolt the wheel up to it. Um, so you can see since we're going to be welding on this, it's probably going to get hot. So I took the uh, little rubber bushings out of there just to keep them from melting. So, uh, yeah, let's get to measuring and cutting and welding and stuff. Alright, so now that we got a bunch of these little pieces cut out, 
I'm just uh, drilling some holes in them, working my way up until the studs fit through. All right, got the holes drilled out, and uh, got enough studs here. Holes drilled out so the studs should fit nice in there and be perfect size to press fit them. So let's do that. Perfect. Nice. All right, so got this thing all nice cleaned up, nice shiny bright metal. Got those things all uh, in there and uh, tightened down and lined up so I know they're parallel um, because I took this uh, straight edge and you see that it lines up nice with uh, those and it lines up nice with those so I know that those are, uh, since they're pointing towards each other, I'm pretty sure the wheel was made with four holes in a 90 degree orientation, that uh, those are all straight. So then I just uh, set this on here and I'll just eyeball the distance there and the distance there get as close as I can and uh, for what we're doing that's going to be good enough and I'll just tack it in there tack it on there there and there and then I'll unbolt it and uh, weld it all solid and then we'll have ourselves a nice little hub there it is it's got four little tacks on there holding her together now we're just going to weld all around there and make it solid make it one sweet Alrighty, there it is. Don't touch it, it's hot. How's it look? Oh, let's wait for it to cool down. Let's stick some bushings in there and bolt a wheel up to it. That'd be cool. There she is all painted up. Bushings installed. Dollar can black. Favorite color for this lawnmower. Alrighty, let's bolt some wheels up. There she is. Look at that. That's a big ass freaking ATV tire on the front of this lawnmower. Ooh -wee. I gotta do the other side so we can set this thing down, but looking at clearances, it all clears. Now obviously that's really close, and uh, as the suspension you know kind of gives a little bit, you know it's probably gonna rub. So I do want to put some steering stops in there a little bit stronger than what's there. And on the other side, lots of clearance there, but uh, once again probably want to put some good steering stops in there to kind of protect everything, protect the steering. Um, and that should help things last a while, but yeah, everything clears great. Can't wait to get the other side done. There she sits, boys. Got the body and the motor back on the frame. Not much else. Still got a lot of work to do before this thing's uh, trail worthy again. Pretty much still got to go through all sorts of other stuff to get this thing working good. But let's have a look at how she sits. Got the toe set a little bit in. That's fine. Once you're moving, it'll kind of road force will kind of push it back it'll be a little bit straighter and plus I'm gonna be banging into stuff so eventually it'll get towed out anyway um, bodies on there fixed a bunch of bolts that had ripped out so it's actually mounted on there stronger than it was before I started this whole thing so that's good um, motors just bolted in nothing's hooked up to well the fuel lines hooked up but none of the wiring or the uh, controls are hooked up yet so I still gotta do all that here's my uh, my new engine. It's a Honda Industrial Quiet Briggs 14.5 uh, horsepower, 9 horsepower. So that's pretty cool. Actually, that's just a uh, Honda GX270 pull start cover, or pull start welded right onto the cover there. He says weld that cover right to the original Briggs fan shroud. And here's the GX270 starter cup. I had to shorten it. This whole thing sat up like about an inch taller. And the notches, I had to cut the notches because uh, they didn't go down this far. So I had to cut the notches down about an inch farther. And I had to make the hole just the tiniest, tiniest bit bigger to fit that bolt through it. Um, but it's so nice having that pull start on there. You don't have to worry about having a dead battery. And it just, you know, I mean, it's just a pull start just like normal. So it's it's real easy to use. But I need to put a cord in. I ripped the cord last time I tried to start this thing. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, so that's pretty much how I got these big ass wheels to fit on the front and the rear of this mower. I just cut the center sections out of the wheels and then made studs fit and then bolted up some ATV wheels and tires. So it's pretty pretty easy, pretty simple. It just takes a little bit of time. Mower's not ready to go yet. Got to rewire it. Kind of in the process of doing that now. Uh, building all new cables. So you can see my new big ass cables there. Got the lugs all 
put on there and whatever. Uh, so I gotta run new switches because all these things got corroded with water, rain, so. Still got some work to do, but you'll be seeing videos as I do interesting stuff. So, look forward to that. Thanks for watching, guys.